aqui. Tá. Boa tarde a todo mundo, sou Amy Duchel, pesquisadora e líder da equipe de mudanças climáticas do C4. O C4 é o Centro Internacional de Pesquisa Florestal. Eu vivo na Indonésia, onde tem a, a sede do C4, e acabei de chegar no Brasil para passar as férias aqui. Acabei, cheguei ontem à noite. E organizamos este webinar como parte de uma série de eventos virtuais para fechar a fase atual do estudo comparativo global sobre Red Mais. E nos últimos meses, temos realizado workshops virtuais na Indonésia, Vietnã, DRC, Peru e hoje no Brasil. E todas as gravações dos eventos estão disponíveis no website do C4 e colocaremos o link aqui uh, no chat. Então, hoje, o webinar, o foco é informações, análises e ferramentas para apoiar programas subnacionais de rede no Brasil. E gostaria de, de dar a palavra agora para meu colega, o Andrew Mikolas, do ICRAF, que nossas organizações estão fazendo um merger, o C4 e o ICRAF. Então, o ICRAF é um parceiro-chave no Brasil, sempre era e agora mais. Então, Andrew, por favor, está me ajudando com a abertura deste evento. Obrigado, Amy. Obrigado a todo mundo que pôde participar hoje, chegando quase perto do final do ano. Foi muito difícil, então agradeço a todo mundo que poder vir hoje e passar um tempinho para ver as apresentações desse excelente trabalho que o CIFOR vem desenvolvendo é, em, em vários países e que tem também um, um braço muito forte no estado do Pará. O ICRAF tem estado envolvido é, com o estado do Pará ao longo dos últimos anos, liderado pelo Federico, que vai apresentar mais tarde. É, a, a elaboração de, de insumos... And the elaboration justamente subsidiar a política... ...of the technicians to subsidize uh, climate change in red plus. And I'd like to thank and know the effort and uh, work, acknowledge the work of Maria Teresa, who has been a very great partner, especially with the state of Pará, Secretary of the Environment of the state, with whom we signed, together with the governor, Adel Barbalho, uh, an assistance to them. And we're in the phase of some studies that uh, will be soon launched. I'm very glad to be in this event. It's very important to see the results that will be coming out after so many years of works led by C4. And uh, we are quite sure that these results will help very much to bring more subsidies for the development of uh, red policies and climate policies in the state of Pará. So with that, I thank again Thank you, Andrew. And now I'd like to hand over the microphone to Carlos Aragon, coordinator of the task force of the governors, also to help in opening this event. Carlos, please. Thank you, Amy. First, I'd like to thank C4 in the craft for the initiatives. They're very important partners for this last couple of years. And uh, your work has been given emphasis to the importance of the work of subnational governments in uh, climatic change challenges. I'd like to point out important aspects that we'll put forth today. First, the context of a uh, significant challenge. The United States have been, uh, for more than a decade, in the Amazon trying to assess uh, Red Plus systems by payment of uh, carbon credits, uh, market, and re most recently, for environmental services. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to attract enough flows for investment that are necessary to face uh, deforestation events. The second aspect that's also very related to the thing to be treated today is related as to how the states take decisions, make decisions. Scientific basis has been an essential element of all the state in, the participating states are uh, using it. And a second important element has been the regulatory framework of the third triagon, triagon political triagon. 
all have been trying to stop deforestation or reduce deforestation. A third, third element that is important is related to the recent approval still in the Senate. It's a law project for payment for forest services, environmental services. It went to the Chamber of uh, Deputies and should be analyzed in the Chamber to have its decreed, its power decreed. And also environmental services that are certainly very important in Brazil and certainly in the Amazon. In uh, the eighth incise uh, paragraph, it is important to institute a payment for environmental service to stimulate uh, scientific research regarding the valoration and development of uh, executives for execution and monitoring and execution. Only to say that the generation of knowledge is an important element that's also acknowledged within the structure of the law of payment for environmental services. Thank you for the opportunity. The theme is essential for the states of the Amazon, not the United States, the states of the Amazon. And uh, it is a light for decision making in our states. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Now we'll see a short video that will give us an introduction to the cap global comparative study in Red and C4 so that you get to know it. C4's Global Comparative Study on Red Plus is the largest of its kind. The goal is to produce information, analysis, and tools to promote what we call 3E outcomes in Red Plus design and implementation. So those are outcomes that are effective, efficient, and equitable. And this is based on more than 10 years of research, capacity building, and stakeholder engagement activities in 22 forest-rich tropical countries. And our theory of change for the project is focused on co-production of knowledge with diverse partners, ranging from governments to civil society and private sector actors, research organizations, and local communities. And really at the heart of what we do is generating and leveraging a very strong evidence base to help inform forest-friendly policies and actions at multiple levels. Very well. There was some sound missing in the beginning, but that's the whole idea. A study in 22 countries since 2009, so we're very proud of this work that was done 
with several partners, including several of the people who are here today. So now I'd like to introduce the first part of the event. We will have three panelists. First, uh, Lydia Costa Kramer, who is the uh, climate change uh, secretary in uh, Brasilia. Lydia. At the embassy, sorry. Hello, Amy. My camera is turned on. Can you see me? Thank you. Thank you for the invitation and for the work that you've uh, developed for several years. I'm going directly to the issue because I have five minutes only. You asked to talk a little about the investments of Norway and forests and climates in Brazil. So I believe that in this context that we're talking about red, the most relevant thing is the support that Norway has been given to the uh, Amazon Fund. It's been going on for several years, began in 2008. I believe it is the knowledge of all that uh, the fund, uh, the value with which we've contributed uh, since the last payment we made in 2018 was $1.2 billion for the results reached in uh, deforestation, against deforestation in the Amazon. This partnership with the Amazon Fund has been the mainstay of the, our partnership for climate and forests, especially between Brazil and Norway during all this time. This mechanism for payment through the fund is the most significant example that we have because it takes into account the uh, time it's been uh, going on and also the amount of resources that were attributed to the fund on our part. The fund, I believe, has been the first in the uh, type of collaboration. And I'd like to say that we're very proud to be able to follow and support the uh, growth and maturing of the fund during all these years in Brazil. My message of what we want to hand over to you today is that I'd like to particularize several important aspects regarding this mechanism when we talk about the Amazon Fund. It serves as a base to all the partnerships that uh, are at the option of being developed, whether they are in the ambit of red or national level and jurisdictional level also. The experience that we have at the fund, uh, I'd like to divide it into two parts, this partnership. Uh, one is the methodology behind it, behind Amazon Fund, to make the payment the payments being made, new donations being made to, for example, in the country and the region. And second aspect is about the fund itself, the fund, how it's managed, how it's created to manage the resources which become projects. That's the other uh, side where the money goes places. Usually, people tend to focus that more. For example, when you talk about uh, Amazon Fund, the resources that are there, what is it going to be testing to? It's an interesting logic, so the two aspects that I show, two sides of the same coin. I'll talk a little about the uh, first part of the methodology, which is based in our experience, where I'll talk about the technical part of it, because there are technical parts, there are several specialists, you know, but I'd like to say, and her talk was interrupted, interruption of the talk. Livia, it seems that you're uh, muted. Oops. Uh, now you can hear me? I, I lost, this, we lost this last 10 seconds. Okay, so I'll focus here. In, or the message I want to hand over is I explained the two parts that I talked about, right, uh, of this partnership of ours, the methodology behind it, and the fund itself. So I'd like to hand over to you. Uh, uh, first is that Brazil is in the process of reduction of deforestation since 2004, <clears throat> when we formed the partnership. For us, it is important to say that it was the, the policy that Brazil implemented and not the payments 
themselves of not re that reduced uh, deforestation. So we agree that the policy of the country is the most important aspect, whether it's Brazil or any other country or any region, in fact, in this relationship. These policies are the ones that reduce emissions, really. When we pay a small part of that, part, that payment, I believe it's uh, reasonable and that uh, it will necessary regarding the partnership we're also paying as if it was a part a pilot for the global mechanism the grid in real scale i think it is important to create incentives financial incentives <clears throat> so that the forest countries receive this and that we pay for these free services that uh, nature offers and that these services should benefit the local population what we observed uh, during the partnership also through several dialogues that we have with the brazilian authorities is that the resources financial resources of Norway <clears throat> worked as a way of incentive and motivation for the implementation of a policy that is complex as you know it is controversial too and also a great scale given the size of brazil grandiosity of brazil something that we haven't seen in other tropical countries but it's important to point out also that uh, <clears throat> for us it is that that policy has to have a priority at high level by the uh, partner countries so, this is so that we can really have a concrete effect in the reduction of deforestation and emissions. So, this is an important message as to the importance of the policies. And there is no finance that would be sufficient for a Red Plus, but this uh, Red Plus network. But the model that we've developed is quite good. It is important to uh generate this uh policy for help so that uh, countries will reduce deforestation we're supporting countries with international levels they are called art centuries that uh, have the intention of generating more financing coming from the private funds towards carbon and uh, for the environment and social. This is part of the methodology of the incentive that does the, makes the uh, payments to be concretized. But there's the other side of the coin, which is the use of the resources that support projects in the region. Here is where I want to point out something that I heard not long ago in the view of another person from abroad saying that the Amazonian fund itself has worked as a lab for experiments, giving opportunities for entrepreneurship and also support of the local community for experimenting sustainable practice and for local reduction of deforestation. My understanding is that this has been acknowledged by um, important sectors of the Brazilian society, these efforts through this support to project. We as donator, donors have uh, dialogued with partners and partners and authorities is the need to give scale to several examples. There are several examples of good, good projects that may take from midterm to long term to sustainability of the region and uh, social and economic welfare of the local population. So it is interesting because the resource that is passed over it comes back to the local population. And when I say that there is there are two sides of the same coin, we know that we are contributed with, with money and we are acquiring two products, <clears throat> as we say, the reduction of uh, uh, preventive reduction of uh, forest and support to the local population, two sides of the coin. So I'd like to finalize saying something, and it is that this kind of work, this methodology that takes to the contribution of the donors requires action and requires results too. At this time that we're going through in Brazil especially, but in several parts, it demands that deforestation 
becomes reduced, yes, so that new resources coming from donors or private sector <coughs> may be passed over to governments, governments and jurisdictions. Based on this methodology and in the demands of the Amazon Fund, it is that we can then contribute with our resources to the fund, because nowadays we couldn't, given the deforestation level, we could not contribute as normally with the fund, because now the deforestation is higher than the baseline that was established. So in these days, these are short-term actions through command and control, where they are very emergential, emergential that should be prioritized, as we've seen happen in previous years, since the beginning in 2004, when the policy turned. I'd like to thank the opportunity. I'm also excited to hear other interventions. There's Ariel, Ariel and Raoni, and I'm interested in hearing their contribution and their criticisms that are always welcome. I think the central aspect of democracy is a dialogue, and I believe it has uh, an enormous, it is an enormous help to have a dialogue and to think, rethink what we do. I'd also be, be interested to hear from other speakers if you have alternatives as to what we do and actions that might complement what we do and that can help us in an effective way to protect the forest in our role as daughters. Thank you, I mean, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Livia. Really, Norway has been an important partner. And as you well said, it has been an experiment, uh, more than one decade experiment. We are learning from this investment that was a pioneering uh, initiative. I'll ask the next speaker, Harold Anson, economy professor of the Norway uh, University of Sciences of Life and associated to C4. You know his name, he writes a lot about uh, these things, especially in famous based on results, and he will be speaking in English, so please, if you haven't localized it, uh, there's a little globe in the lower part of your screen that says interpretation, and you select the language you want to hear in. If you want to hear it in Portuguese, now you got a Portuguese. No, Portuguese and English. Harold, please. Good afternoon. I hope you can hear me. Let me get try to share the screen. So I will be speaking in English. My Portuguese or Brasiliano is as good as my as my Chinese. Okay, so I'll be talking about uh, result-based payment for for forest conservation. Um, and as you know, the key element of of RED when it was launched, whether we make it 2007 or 2009, was result-based payment, just to incentivize the various stakeholders. But also, it was seen as a as a fairness question, as a compensation to those that actually make the efforts for for uh, for for storing more carbon in trees and the soil, so it comes under a number of names: payment for environmental services, performance or output-based aid. Some call it uh, cash on delivery (COD), that should be translated to bacalao in in Portuguese, etc. But it is essentially the same idea. There are three main criteria. First, you make the payments based on some predefined results. So you agree this is what's going to be paid for beforehand. And then the second, which is called recipient discretion to decide how to achieve the results. So as a donor, say Norway should primarily be interested in, in the results and not the way it's achieved. Uh, and thirdly, some independent verification of the results because red, unlike when when you buy coffee, it's it's a it's not a very tangible product. It's a piece of paper with a certified or verified emission reduction. So 
you need and there's a lot of things as i come to it very shortly that can that kind of can be debated as to what constitutes a result does the current uh, result-based funding meet all these criteria only partially there is a problem and that has been a debate in between norway and brazil about the the degree of of, of independent verification of results there is some discretion but not completely for example you have introduced the cancun safeguards in red specifying some conditions that have to be met when you try to achieve these results in the form of emission reductions and i will go through three main challenges related to uh, to uh, result-based funding first uh, what to pay for and one way of looking at is to if you look at the impact chain where we go from inputs to activities to outputs to outcomes to impacts kind of a log frame analysis what should we pay for now ideally we should like to pay for impacts and there are strong arguments for that because after all our primary concern is climate change and it relates to the emissions so the impacts of projects and policies but it's tricky both in terms of measurement and uh, risk spreading in the way that if you pay only for the outcomes or the impacts it's the those who are to deliver the results that that are kind of responsible for a shock like a covid pandemic or a surge in agricultural prices or a fire whatever has not been accounted for and of course the reference levels becomes more tricky as you move to the right in this impact chain so that's one dimension. A second dimension concerns the which outcomes to pay for. Uh, UNFCC, the second paragraph outlining the purpose is all about climate change and and greenhouse gas emissions, carbon and of course other greenhouse gases, but primarily carbon that we are interested in. Uh, or should we also have some results linked to so-called non-carbon benefits and if the answer is yes how should we include them we may think of including them as constraints or as safeguards as an example of or it can be some extra payment and i looked at the price that was obtained in the voluntary markets in a few years ago uh, where those that only had this verified carbon standard got uh, Fairly low price, 2.3 US dollars per ton CO2. But if you have this carbon and community biodiversity standard in addition to the VCS, you had quite a nice premium on that. So that's in a way where the market rewards those that that have included non-carbon benefits in the projects. So that is a possible way of doing it. What are the ways forward? First. I think it's important to provide incentives for all the red faces. Red has now moved ahead and become more and more result-based. It was from the initial agreement with Brazil, between Norway and Brazil from 2008, it was already there, but also for others with the Green Climate Fund, with the ICAO, the aviation, etc., where you have more and more moving towards what was the initial uh, feature of red but now it's becoming really you see it more and more in spite of that it's important for to have uh, incentives for all red faces also those that are building capacity that are making policy changes before you enter what's called the stage three of red where you have payment based on results i have argued for some time and many people disagree with me which is fine um, that we should focus on carbon and then have safeguards and, and non-carbon benefits as additional incentives why i have two arguments for for that my, my position first that carbon and climate change is sufficiently important to be the main focus and secondly that conserving carbon is largely compatible with other objectives such as biodiversity and livelihoods particularly if you use ps to, to achieve these results as an article by Amy and co-authors a couple of years back showed where they reviewed the experience with, with a red project that has been included in the global comparative study of CEPOR. 
Second challenge is setting reference levels, which is about defining emission reduction. Now, you can define an emission reduction is the difference between an actual emission maybe here, and then you have a reference level up here, and the gap between the two will be the reference level baseline. This is confusing. And even the UNFCC, if you look historically, they have kind of been playing with two different meanings, using the same word for two different animals. One is the business as usual baseline, which is a prediction of what would happen without the policy, which is the standard counterfactual analysis you use when you want to make an impact assessment. The second one, which I call on the crediting baseline, is the basis for payment. And these may be different or they may not, I've illustrated in the, in the figure here. And just to show how important it is, um, if you look at the left panel here of the graph, a very well-known figure to all of you, the deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon uh, over the last two and a half decades, where, yeah, you know the red graph here. Now, the Amazon Fund, as you well known, it was a very simple kind of uh, formula for setting the reference level. The average deforestation last 10 years updated every five years. And that's what you see on these graphs here with the, um, with the blue one starting when it was signed, the agreement in 2008, then the, the brown uh, yellowish line here for the next, and then finally the green since 2016 for these previous 10 years. Now, there is also another baseline that is used by Brazil in its submission to the UNFCCC. And, and what we get here is that the, the actual um, reference levels matter a lot. So we ask a very simple question. Did Brazil achieve any emission reductions in 2019 or 2020? This, you know, the, the, the year has already ended, the forest year in Brazil ended in August. So, the, so the, what you see, the answer to that question depends entirely which reference level you use, whether you use this uh, 2006 to 2015, which is kind of the Amazon fund formula, or you use the official UNFCC submission. Another way to, to kind of modify historical is what the neighbors in Peru have done where they took the trend and kind of extrapolated that. So when they submitted their reference level to the UNFCCC, they kind of did an extrapolation, done nicely with a regression analysis and a good basis for that, but you put it above. I've looked at a few of the submissions to UNFCC, and now I think there are more than 50 submissions in total from, from countries about trails for the, for the red mechanism and there is a tendency to kind of choose reference periods and choose to include trends or not in a way that inflate your reference level a little bit i'm not saying that countries are gaming but if there is a tendency that those that kind of include trends they tend more to end up with a higher reference level than those than if they didn't do that. If there's a tendency that the changes compare to kind of a standard way of doing it, which is no trends and have a specific period, say 2000, 2010, if the deviations tend to benefit the countries, then you may argue that there is a need to clarify a few key aspects, to standardize the period and also to specify what should be in national circumstances. And this goes also for within a country like Brazil, what are kind of eligible or legitimate national circumstances to be taken account when you want to deviate from using historical averages for the baseline. The third challenge is who to pay. We'll have to go through this one quite quickly, just because we yeah. know it. Okay. The, yeah. So the question is who owns or is entitled to the emission reduction? Put up six different potential recipients for the payment. Um, it's also very tricky. Was the deforestation or forest degradation illegal? And who owns the emission reduction from, for example, a concession not granted or a policy change where it's very hard to point out to a particular community or actor that reduced deforestation? They may not have been involved at all, but just 
because the policy change they didn't do. Ways forward, my main principle is to have the costs, uh, those that incur the cost and attribute the results should be and have can put a claim. So it's been costly to them and they have changed behavior in such a way that they did. It's also the question of fairness. And let me just end with a quote from one negotiator. I, I made a comment in at one of the cops and said, well, this is not fair. And he asked, saying, well, it's what is fair is what everyone can agree on. So setting reference level is at the end of the day, a question of negotiation and try to reach an agreement between the various actors. So thank you. Obrigada, Harold. E agora vamos, uh, Thank you, Harold. Now we're the next uh, speaker, Rani Rajão, a professor of social studies of uh, sciences in the in production engineering University of uh, Federal University of Minas Gerais and a new partner for C4. Rani, please. I'd like to also say that put in your questions to the speakers in the Q&A box. You can also be in the chat. So the speakers, Livia, Harold, and Hani, go there to the chat in the Q&A box to answer to people to create uh, dynamics here. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to all. It is a pleasure to be here with you. I believe that uh, since we're talking about Brazil, and at this moment in Brazil, I believe that the majority of the room here is those who are hearing. I will ex ask them to excuse me, those for those who don't speak the language. I'll share my screen. My presentation is, uh, in a certain way, the search of a context with which we are in terms of climatic uh, agreements and how we are in terms of carbon emissions coming from uh, deforestation, red plus, in this context. Before anything else, it is important to acknowledge what is the situation of Brazil, what the goal established in Brazil regarding other countries. And in a certain way, the contradictions that Harold was raising regarding the definition of what would be business as usual, what would be reductions on top of that, and what would be uh, uh, deforestation itself. It reflects in the NBC, which is uh, self-determined climatic uh, goals where the countries indicate what their ambition is. We can see, compared to several other countries here, of uh, forest basis and development under the de uh, on develop in development developing countries sorry you have goals idc which is a little ball here and here is the position of a, a business as usual context so the country pr promises to reduce growth right and this is very clear in the case for example congo also, Peru has uh, some conditions, especially Colombia and Indonesia. But Brazil, in a very similar way to Brazil and Europe, is the only country, big developing country, emerging country, that has a goal that is absolute as part of the value that is fixed in the case of 2005 and brings a reduction from 2005. Brazil is not promising to decrease the increase it promises what was the logic of that number which was the 2020 goal this year but what brazil proposes is a reduction and uh, that's why they put this as a proposal that is ambitious what is the challenge for all this why will what will brazil have to do to in fact reduce emissions and reach their climatic goals we made a study together with uh, cop of ufrj university for different scenarios 
in uh, land use, especially looking at the dynamics of deforestation in a spatially explicit uh, way, where the deforestation happens and what are the emissions. And on the other hand, what was possible to be done in, with investments, with uh, reduction of investments, uh, with reduction of emissions through uh, lowering the activity for the energetic, for example sector we have a scenario here where the deforestation in the amazon and in cerrado points towards the goals originally established in the normal uh, panorama of a reduction of climate uh, change climate change in brazil and the tendency observed since 2012 when there was a higher trend for deforestation and a slow tendency where you have a jump to deforestation getting near the pre-2004 levels. How do you translate this effectively into uh, total emissions? Considering emissions in other sectors that add up in the scenarios for strong governance, it is possible for the country to reduce substantially their emissions from 2018, including having a plus result with a plus for results in this context of Article 6 of the uh, Paris Agreement would permit a sale of uh, credit, carbon credits that could be sold to other countries that could emit more with that credit. So when we get into the scenario of uh, intermediary governance, the uh, possibility of maneuvering is lower. There is a necessity of heavy investments in, in energy creation, production, to unplug the thermoelectric and go into the electrification of cars and very cheap, uh, very expensive investments to gain space for emissions in the growth of the uh, first sector. And even then, it is not possible to reach that goal. When you have weak governance, well, with deforestation out of control, no condition is possible to reach goals, not even in 2013. And what's the present day situation? If our study was, our study was made in 2018 with data from 2017, but what's interesting is to monitor since then how it has uh, progressed in deforestation when we see that from 2018 onwards there was a jump of around 30 percent in uh, deforestation for the amazon that uh, takes us out of strong governance and goes into weak governance and put us nearer to the uh, weak governance so we're more nearer and nearer to the red zone a dangerous zone to not be able to attain our climatic uh, proposals so Deforestation control is at the basis of Brazil's NDC without a very big uh, reduction, especially in the Amazon states. There is no way that Brazil can reach its climate uh, goals. We can also see that in the political debate, there is an enormous uh, declaration uh, of a fiesp, the Federation of Industry, saying that they wouldn't pay the uh, costs for, for, for these goals to be achieved. There is enormous pact uh, put forth by the interests of agriculture and industry. They have no way to pay for that. Our industries, they say, will not pay for the problem that one sector is causing to the whole economy. Now, if Brazil was able to uh, reach its goal, including with a role and DC deforestation, it's still possible to sell 400, more than 400,000 tons of uh, metric tons of carbon per year. One of the methods developed could generate $10 per ton. And we're talking about $4 billion annually that could be coming in in fact, also for the Amazon states, it could force itself to generate somehow a very positive cycle, cycle now. And results, of course, there's no way to sell something that produce, Brazil hasn't produced as yet. Well, in fact, this puts us in a situation that uh, going over 
around uh, 14,000 kilometers of deforestation in the Amazon, it is impossible for Brazil to reach its uh, climate goals, forcing the countries to be able to, to have to buy credit from other countries to reach their uh, climatic goals and avoid uh, an eventual law. International commerce uh, 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 consequence. The agreement is only valid if the country reaches its goals in, uh, established in the uh, Paris Agreement. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you, Rani. Very interesting to understand what is needed to reach climate. Goals. Now we go to the second part of the discussion. So please put your comments, your questions in the chat, and Ariel, Lili, and Rani are going to the chat to directly answer you. I'd like to introduce Anna Carolina Fiorini, my colleague. She will moderate the second part about lessons coming from subnational experiences. She's an instructor of support. And uh, is graduated from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. Thank you, Amy. I'll try to accelerate a little. I'll make a sound when there is uh, time for people. So, Ana Carolina Crisostomo is going to be talking, and then Monica afterwards. Okay, Ana, your floor. Hello, good afternoon. I'm going to share my screen here. Okay. Good afternoon to all. A pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation in this space where people study this theme, my colleagues. I'm Ana Carolina Crisostomo. I'm a master in uh, conservation and development, and I've worked in the implementation of this tool for sustainability of uh, landscapes. And this tool it is an evaluation done by several partners, trying to understand by evidence to evaluate initiatives and policies, jurisdictional policies, that may make it possible for building more sustainable countries. It is a construction of um, sustainable landscape and puts in evidence uh, initiatives and jurisdictional policies. Talking about uh, greenhouse effects that will permit that these goals might be reached. So CIFAR made the application of this tool in a number of jurisdictions. Of a GSF, Global GSF, which Monica is sharing with us. Also, this partnership implemented this in the state of Akiri and some very complementary tools uh, that are similar to those that I'm presenting. We have a little time. The tool is very complete and extensive, very detailed. It looks to six themes, ordering and management, property of land, biodiversity, coordination and parts, Systems for production of merchandise, learning, and uh, institutional development. In, within each one, there is a number of questions that were evaluated and classified according to their stage, initial stage, and, uh, middle stage, and advanced stage, which is the, adv the advanced is the uh, adequate one. And to framework these questions, there were in evidence. Firstly, from uh, public data, official documents, but also technical reports and uh, data sources from NGOs. When the data were not uh, gotten in this way, there were interviews. After forming a first uh, 
filling in of the tool, there was evaluations of uh, responses and promotions of discussions of these attribution. Several people from Rondonia and Tocadis participated in it. I'll make a very straight summary of what called my attention first. Point is that the majority of the states that are in GCF were members of the task force, the governance task force, have at least the commitment of the Rio Branco goal. But the information when the, when there are no others more specific. Nevertheless, the information about these uh, goals were not public in the majority of the cases. So in official sites, you couldn't find information about these goals. Just as it's very difficult to obtain uh, information about the monitoring of these goals. When there is some evaluation process, it's more punctual in time, so it does only meet the demands of uh, specific donors and partners, and even then, these evaluations are very difficult to be compared. And we see a reflection of that in the management itself. The action of state public organs in different areas in environmental management is very clear. There is a lack of knowledge of these goals, in fact, and this calls very much the attention because this is a very big challenge for these goals and commitments can be intentionally attained through the efforts of the states. This also is uh, aggravated because of a lack of commitment in preserving the memory of the uh, institu of institutional memory. So in the change of governments, you have a discontinuity, discontinuity of uh, rules and norms that depends on uh, mid and normal and, and uh, long-term permanence of these uh, parameters in order for them to be implemented. So you always have to have new funds. But where is this discussion happening? Well, it is happening. Will happen in the specifics red plus specific red plus forms, but still in a sort of fringe way. So the or the public order that fringe as to what is being discussed by the uh, public administration organs and the councils of. Uh, environment where the struggle is bigger. They have no discussion on commitments and goals that orient them. These are not the commitments and goals that are dealing with the people who are discussing their administrative measures. So the discussion becomes very particularized when we look at the participation of indigenous peoples and traditional populations that are directed, related in, uh, and interested in preservation, something we look for in the uh, safeguards and guarantees for rights, we can see that the, their participation is very low, folks focused in uh, specific punctual places. And when the states have uh, very specific programs for Red Plus, these groups will participate in the definition of uh, distribution of benefits, but when we sue, when you see the managers of public policies that already impact these territories in these communities, they have resources, yes, but their participation is very limited. To go to the capital to participate in the commissions, and there is a lack of symmetry in, uh, in talk. And this reflects very much when this uh, tension increases regarding the guarantee of territories and guarantee to the use of uh, natural resources. This reflects in a general way because this tool shows a lot about the environmental policies and related to the climate that were mapped. There is a norm that can be refined, can be improved, but the implementation and the insurance of their enforcement is still limited. This also limits this scenario in its capacity, strategic capacity within the state to be organized and setting up for the uh, reaching of these goals in a way 
that it could be more efficient and fairer. This is a very uh, general summing up of uh, aspects and uh, these points have to be detailed a lot more and we can talk about that later. Thank you Monica, you can go on with uh, Thank you. Good afternoon to all. Thank you for your participation. I'll try to share my screen so that we don't waste any time in this discussion and the joint presentation we've done. Now we're going to the analysis together with C4 in cooperation with GCF. We made an analysis of the sustainability, jurisdictional sustainability of the uh, GCF uh, methods and the, the, the performance of the measures as to the goals established in the Rio Branco Agreement. We made an analysis on the social economic uh, sustainability as presented in this graphic, and we did not evaluate well, this evaluation was complementary to the tool presented by Anna Carolina, and we did not evaluate the good or bad performance. How did these elements, or in which stage of design and implementation are these elements found? The majority of these elements are at the uh, initial state, recently designed or intermediary in implementation. So they're in the first phases. Few jurisdictions have advanced a state of full implementation of these of some of these elements. This also reflects in the progress, let's say, of the jurisdictions, the reach of the commitment for reduction of deforestation with red were the main uh, methods of GCF and the commitments assumed in the Rio Branco Declaration. Four of the new emissions in the Brazilian NAFTA, four, four in nine, have a reduction related to free REL. Only one jurisdiction reached this goal in 2018, but in the joint group contention, as Rami said in his presentation, in the joint group, the Amazon region has a good uh, contribution in uh, of 7.5 tons of CO2. Five of the emissions uh, have an advancement uh, going towards maybe reach a DRB, Declaration of Rio Branco, and we've seen that this deforestation has increased, is behind in the uh, reaching of this commitment, and two states might reach this goal in some years, but only ha if they have immediate reduction of deforestation. But this is intimately linked to the uh, collaborations. Uh, just one direct response, the commitment of Noruega only, who signed this uh, call for a commitment of uh, support with the uh, GCF countries. The graph shows what the states have accessed in terms of uh, states, I mean uh, the national governments of the jurisdictions of uh, GCF. In terms of access to resources for the implementation of any one of these elements of sustainability, from 2010 to 2019, these governments accessed a number of resources around more than $450 million. We're talking about this bottom for nine states, where there still is, as a stage, an initial or intermediate scenario for sustainability. So these resources that arrive are still insufficient regarding the needs. Very little financing can have uh, direct results in, uh, in these regions. Uh, only uh, Mato Grosso and the state received directly the uh, benefits. What is missing here, really, and this is important to link to the presentation of Raoni, 
is it is necessary to have a financial collaboration that is given directly to this region because the references that we're talking about are extensive and changes in uh, economic uh, long-term uh, application in economic resources, of economic resources. But it is urgent for jurisdictions to have great quantity of uh, remaining forests with low deforestation that naturally have a prospect of uh, increase in deforestation. So we have to have <clears throat> sustainability element that will promise, will uh, ensure a quick de deforestation decreases. You can see all this in the site of uh, Earth Innovation. <clears throat> and we can discuss more about this. So let's continue talking about it with uh, Jasmine to to stakeholders fóruns e queria pedir para todos os palestrantes, uh, os palestrantes, por favor, para responderem as perguntas no chat e no no Q&A, tá? Muito obrigado. In the Q&A, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will say I'm sorry because it's been a long time since I've had the opportunity of speaking here. But I will present the doctor's degree uh, research that I've done. And the objective of my research was determine if the multiple actors for forums created for the uh, territorial planning, planning can collaborate and uh, ec in, uh, become equitable for sustainable development. I made a comparative analysis of the uh, ecological zoning and ec ecological and economic zoning uh, commissions of two states, Brazilian states, Acuity and Mato Grosso. So, why is this relevant? Well, because these forums have the objective of promoting democracy, to have better land use, but sometimes this doesn't happen easily. You can happen things, things like uh, Land grabbing can happen. Methods, very quickly. I have only five minutes. Were different kinds of uh, questionnaires, for different kinds of informers, and also the Q method was a matrix to pick up uh, comments on the coming in the forms, comparing the weight of participants in these forms. Here are some photos. Results. First result was that uh, nowadays, uh, where, when, and why, and how did the commissions in Zoni appear, and what was their development? The main idea, and actually the context, was an alliance in uh, with a social environmental alliance with the government of Akiri. This new governor of Akiri in that time pulled the uh, san sanitary conditions to become part of uh, the social environmental alliance. There would be a realistic uh, but also idealistic uh, objective. Also to re... So the planning secretary for environment as a state they promote, promoted uh, sanitary development to reach international agreement and to strengthen the economy. It's a complex uh, relationship. The second key result is that in the commissions, the power of the local elite was challenged, avoided, reproduced, and even taken advantage of in this very complex situation. In the Commission, the power of social environmental alliance was in part reproduced because the majority of the participants of the Commission were part of the alliance. In part, it was taken advantage of, it was used, because the fact that the government had much political power and a lot of entire knowledge, it didn't become a problem because they were in the in, to the favor of the uh, indigenous peoples and other forest dwellers. The Faculty Commission was not a uh, majority in the Commission, but also it was avoided because the organizer didn't give too much uh, political power to the uh, governor in the Commission. 
and the approach was very technical, so nobody really understood the map. Also, the indigenous people did not have a representation, especially in the first phase, phase one. So, this was a Kilambola who represented the uh, phase one representation of them. And there is a recording that, uh, who said that they traditional communities are invisible and they, the government, said that they only took the official data from one side. The third result is that none of the commissions functioned isolatedly. Other mechanisms developed uh, a commitment and a function of equity. So there was a whole system of different uh, spaces of government which together built up a map that was considered very equitable, very fair, and was easily approved. But in Mato Grosso, the process was more linear. So after the commission, agribusiness, because they were challenged by the commission, right? So they used public additions in the legislative assembly to control, to stop the process. And after that, the environmental sectors continued with uh, uh, putting up demands with the public sector, from the public sector, saying that the assembly had approved the measures. There is ethno zoning, which was a fundamental part of uh, the uh, zoning of Acre that permitted indigenous peoples to ensure their lands, guarantee their lands. To the right, you have a photograph of the public audiences in Mato Grosso. And the same point in the fight was, uh, it was something that the, uh, some things that the, even the commission couldn't talk about, which what were the spaces in which these commitments are going to be held. Well, finishing, because I had short time. The first point is that we have to go beyond a vision that is only positive or only negative. There is a common uh, asset, yes, and trade-offs, and elites may win or may lose. You also have to take into account going beyond a technocratic vision. If FMAs are very political, then you don't, you can't see the power in the forums, but coming from the forums also. Stakeholders try to make maps reproducing their realities or their views of the reality. And the forums can empower the traditional peoples, but do not reflect their diversity and can even make them invisible. That's why not all decisions should also be made through the forums. Social actions, rights to territory are fundamental and uh, for a different context. Thank you. More information in these publications here. Thank you, Jasmine. I'll call Federico, researcher from Igrafi. We'll be talking about the situation Red Plus in Para. Thank you, Federico. And please, the panelists, do not forget to answer your questions. They haven't been answered. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to all. I am Yana Carolina. Thank you for the invitation and the opportunity. I will also greet all the uh, speakers here, CIFA family, and in general, the Brazil family that has been working for the issue of uh, deforestation in the Amazon. My presentation will look at uh, essentially at uh, the state of Pará and the ingredients, fundamental ingredients, for the success of uh, RED nationally. This is a work. I hope I'm still uh, with my sound. This is a work based on my last four or five years of work in Pará, evaluating the work of the federal and municipal governments and state governments, also comparing to other state powers in the Amazon.
and also private sector. I begin by explaining very quickly so that uh, we don't waste much time why para is important to the world and I brought just one figure that uh, resumes the importance of para. We can see here the uh, year deforestation of several countries, Bolivia, Peru, Colombia, Ecuador. We understand that if, country, if Pará was a country, it would be the second biggest, uh, uh, the biggest uh, the deforesting country in the world, only behind one other country, which would be called Brazil. So it really uh, deforests much more than the other countries in the Pan Amazon. This is based in uh, different data from different sources in 2020. When we talk about uh, ingredients, I'd like to point out that the ingredients, when they are very well mixed, and when there is uh, scientific knowledge, we're able to bring, bring important results. And I brought some images. He's not sharing the uh, uh, his screen. Yes, but we're not seeing you. We're not seeing your screen. I pointed out the four ingredients, fundamental ingredients, for our magic potion. First one, looking at government. Of course, political leadership is important. Are you sharing your screen? We can't see your presentation. She hasn't gone in at any time. Now you got it, right? No, sorry. I was showing you the uh, annual uh, deforestation rates in Paris, important in the world. The biggest uh, neighboring countries. Paris, if it was a country, it would be the second bigger deforesting, except uh, just behind uh, a country called Brazil. I would only like to bring this figure of the importance of the ingredients to know how to mix them and bring scientific knowledge and traditional knowledge to be able to get results, successful results. Beginning for ingredient number one, the importance of governments. First, political leadership, everybody knows this. Which is very well referred to. Second issue, the importance of uh, internal articulation and communication between secretaries, the second uh, rank in the government, second echelon. Several times you have different political groups that interfere in this work at second echelon with the complexity of people, and that implies that there is a very specific work. And also the technical capacity and uh, qualification of groups of captains. I bring up uh, Gramsci said that uh, the key to success to big transformations doesn't depend on soldiers general, but depends on captains, captains. And I would be more in agreement with him because government structure will depend mostly on their general, the governor, but will depend much more to have a 30, 40, 50 people being the captains who will perform and execute the agenda and sub-captains too. Going quickly to the second element of uh, the alliance, the ingredients, population, civil, and organized civil society. Two key ideas. The need to go from a destructive criticism to a constructive criticism, the excess of assemblyism and towards the participation of a structured and qualified participation. So sometimes we call a lot of people just to discuss solutions and many times it consumes time, but people have no real capacity of executing anything to talk about. And the second orientation is to bring alignment, internal alignment among the organizations for the third sector and social groups. Many people people talk about things that uh, do not belong to their area of organization. The third element, private sector and markets for the initiatives. Three key ideas. The slowness in the effective uh, realization of 
commitments of zero deforestation and little investment. In the last few years, there have been a little more, uh, but we see that uh, populations that deal with uh, palm tree, palm oil, uh, cocoa, and uh, soybeans have uh, said that they need to be, have more effective advancement. There's an excess, number two, there's an excessive focus on the production of commodities and very little uh, added value to what they produce. And they have to be certified and valued by markets that do not accept uh, added value. And also a provocation for several people here the idea is a uh, traceability as a panacea for the Amazon. Would traceability solve the problem of deforestation in the Amazon? Good question. And I'd like to cite two things. One of them of their legendary friend, John Francisco Fonseca, who must be hearing us. And the idea that our all solutions have to be innovative. Do we have to always to invent new ideas to solve old problems? Or do many times the solutions are simple? All we have to do is to activate ideas that have already been put forth. I know I have no time, so I want to refer the idea of uh, new traditional ideas to fight uh, deforestation might be very, very important. Fourth and last ingredient, the importance of international donors and partners. Very generally, the expectation and evaluation that we are doing here, there is a, a slowness and lack of effectiveness in uh, support mechanisms and uh, wearing out of uh, organisms that can't keep up to agreement. So there should be a more flowing path in that measures, in those measures for donors and partners. When we talk also, number second, when we talk about lack of alignment and uh, overlapping among donors, including secretaries. There's several things that are not aligned. Sometimes they're repeated, there are lapses. So problems of inefficiencies and um, calendars are defined by donors and that creates, so each donor will have different mechanisms, different uh, counter entering, different calendars. This year, for example, three, four donors in almost six months wanted to launch their proposals and organizations tried to do that to train people well there was a need and importance to make this excess more fluid more flowing so that the pact may have more results and the concrete proposals for the case of Pará that can be taken to other localities a common agenda shared by everybody as um, state commitment as we may call it, a long-term commitment that go through two governments at least and take society together sharing. And the commitment for a definition of uh, steps and goals that are intermediary and final ones. Also, the construction of state safeguards that ensure to all peoples and all the stakeholder, stakeholders might be involved. In the case of Pará specifically, that this process be done regionally and that all this may be structured in a fund. We talked about the Amazon fund, an important thing. It solves a lot of problems and a state fund with a single proposal shared by the whole state that have their goals defined and safeguards included and the donors, the private sector, everybody worked with the fund and this fund respond to necessities, calendar, in a unified way so that the administrative measures might be taken and come to have these resources land in the territory. A last su suggestion, there's a paper being released in the next few days, a joint group of recommendations with Teresa and Francisco also, who are working this last year, have been working last year, this year, 50 specific recommendations for the uh, Para Society and stakeholders in Para to launch this uh, policy, the state plan for forests. Uh, Andrea is representing the state of Para here, and I'll be available for any doubt that you might have, and in the questions you may make too. I hug, I hug to you all. Thank you, Federico. I'll hand over the floor to Carolina, who's a doctor at the University of Oxford. 
please, Carolina, are we talking? Hello, good afternoon to all. I'm sharing my screen, right? Am I? Yes, you are. Okay, thank you. Well, good afternoon to all. Good evening for me in the United Kingdom here. I'm working with CIFAR in the comparative study for RED since 2017, and this analysis that I'll present to you has been worked on it uh, with Amy and Adriana Molina, who's here, one of the participants. I saw, I saw her. Hello, Adriana, and Iron Cells. We will talk about the connections between red and car in Brazil. Especially for those who are not Brazilian and are not familiarized with uh, Forest Code, the CIR, the AR, is the fundamental uh, element for the uh, rural, uh, for the uh, forest regulation. Each proprietor of land has has a, has to declare to the environmental organ what are the forest areas and what are the protection areas in their properties. This uh, registration is fundamental because from this inscription in CAR, the environmental organs will have an idea of the actives and passives of environmental and the credits and debits in. Uh, environment and forests in the, each property in Britain. Having in view this importance of CAR, several proposals of a RED initiative in Brazil focused the implementation of CAR as part of their RED implementation projects. So here you have a map of the five main RED initiatives which is the comparative, which was what was studied by the comparative study of CIPOR. And I want to point out here that in this analysis that I'll show you, you we use only three of these uh, projects because those were the ones that we had access of the data. Uh, during the last decade, it has been done since 2000, the previous decade. Uh, Sorry, between 2009 and 2019. In this analysis here, we studied the KNC projects for Pará, IPAM, also in the Transamazonic Road in Pará, several municipalities of Transamazonic, and the project of, Red of the Study Center of Life in, in the Mato Grosso area. This analysis predicted the small properties that are less than 400 hectares that uh, can be defined as small property and depending on the m m rural module of uh, these, we call them fiscal modules of the municipalities, we can analyze three main results. The first of them is that uh, we saw that the inscription in CAR and the participation of small family agriculturers in the uh, RED initiatives are associated to a reduction of deforestation only in the small properties that had less than 50% of their forest coverage. So we see that in general, these properties that were less in agreement with the forest code rules according to, to which the Amazon properties have to preserve from 50 to 80 percent of the uh, forest native coverage. The state has a state law that uh, declares that 50 to 80 percent forest coverage for each property. The effect of reduction of the uh, a reduction of uh, forest devastation with the uh, car properties is only with the, these small properties. Now, initiatives of RED have had an impact, significant impact in the implementation of car in this region of Mato Grosso and Pará. So we see that the families that participated of the RED initiatives in these three projects that I mentioned to you have been associated to having a bigger number of inscriptions in car. This is a significant result statistically because the red projects helped to inscribe them in car in this region as compared to the families who did not participate in red projects. And the third result that is also relevant is that uh, these families that participated in red and were inscribed in CAR reported to us in the collective data that they had an increase in the perception about uh, 
welfare. And they mentioned that the participation in CAR and RED have given them uh, more access to markets so that they could sell the products, their agricultural products, and more access to rural credit at banks. So these are the three results. And I believe that the conclusion here, in general, would be that uh, this success, let's call it that, of the implementation of CAR through RED, with the help of uh, RED, shows that there still is a lot of potential for RED to help in the implementation of the forest code in the Amazon in the subsequent cases. Even though in several states of the Amazon, especially Pará and Mata Grosso, you already have a big part of its territory in driving car, there is still a, a lot to do. And uh, the proprietors may uh, assist the, uh, or may comply with the uh, rules in forest preservation in each property. So CAR has helped in this uh, preservation. You can send me an email, and you can ask, send me questions in the Q&A, and thank you very much to all. Thank you, Carolina. Now, Teresa will lead the discussion of questions, questions and give an overview as to what we discussed today. Teresa is from TNC. Good afternoon to all. Can you see me and hear me? Yes. Good. We had excellent uh, panels here. A lot of information for just a little time, but uh, it was very good anyway. I want to point out to some aspects. There is no it is very important to see the compromise, the, the commitment of jurisdictional powers in the commitments for reduction of deforestation. We have questions related to Frederico put up, put forth the uh, importance of different sectors in reaching subnational commitments but I also believe national commitments. Ana, answering to Raimunda, asked about what would be the path for the facing of the challenges that were raised in the analysis done by Sephora Earth of Innovation, and it mentioned the issue of uh, the need for a multi sectorial effort for the establishment of and a very important point that came up in, during the chat debates was about the uh, difficulty that uh, the creation of new standards and new more rigorous standards then those that were implemented up to now could bring as a special uh, favoring to the states of the Amazon. Looking at the place where we talk from here, which is the National Programs of Red for Brazil, this is a very relevant point to be pointed out. And also, Federico said that we should establish respecting characteristics of each sub, uh, sub of each subnational jurisdiction some points that may be common in order to fortify a regional agenda as was pointed out uh, Aragon in the beginning of our panels I think that uh, another important issue that uh, we saw during the presentations that in some cases the red debates are in very specific sectors in the uh, national jurisdictions but also in the, uh, the federal context and this is not different and this generates a certain uh, distancing of the international intonation of important aspects as to the red commitment and 
environmental policies in national jurisdictions as a whole. The other issue is that the participation of indigenous peoples and traditional populations has been restricted to specific formats. Well, we know that uh, the determining factors for decision making related to eventual impacts that public policies might have over the performance of uh, jurisdictional performance in, in the reaching out. The goals are not restricted to these forums and the decision making is not in these specific forums destined to the uh, climate questions and human rights questions. So these are points that are very relevant and we verify it. there are other points that could be pointed out here. Some issues are still pending for answers. Issues about the participation of sectors. As to a question that remained here, saying about the participation of agriculture in emissions. If we lack policies for the agendas of the uh, forest, uh, policies. I don't know if Raul answered or if you would like to answer, but I believe that we have here a good group of questions and challenges. And the point that was raised lastly by Carolina about uh, the existence of a framework of opportunities for the red products pro programs, sorry, to invest in. In the continuity of this work regarding uh, the uh, car and the impact that that might have over programs in subnational pro programs, I think this is very important. And she brings results that uh, are intermediary regarding the fact that these policies are being executed brings good indicators on the impact of uh, investments, the impact that they might have, the investment. And it's worthwhile think on how is it that uh, the, the governors have been organized to look at these subnational jurisdictions seeking uh, paths so that these resources can effectively arrive to the states, to the subnational jurisdictions in a more efficient way, because there is, there are indi important indicators that the excess of these resources have had a positive impact in the programs, have generated incentives and contributed for positive results that the jurisdictions have presented in the last few years. I don't know if uh, Thank you. Let's leave Carlos to give continuity to this discussion together with some representatives of some governments that you have um, like thrown the ball to them and they might be able to answer some of the questions here to us. Well, thank you very much for this presentation and for the effort to reach these results. I think I see that really there are details that may make a difference in some of these conclusions. But to reflect about the contents that were received, we have with us three specialists, three technicians of three states of ours, and using the language of Frederico, they are in the line of the captains and the line of the soldiers. These are people who have a long experience in the area they have worked in this area for more than uh, one single cycle of uh, public management. Mike Ma Dave Santos involved with climate and Red Plus. And it is a team that uh, travels from juridical, institutional and juridical aspects until top technology for the coverage, uh, forest coverage and have participated in national global jurisdiction for Red Plus Network. Andrea Coelha from Pará, Mauricio Felipe 
from Mato Grosso, and Erico Barbosa from Acre. I'll hand over the microphone to each one of them so that they introduce themselves quickly, talking about their post and function in these institutions. And let's talk about Andrea Coelho from Para. Andrea, please. Her microphone is muted. And I just want to mention that we have six minutes per participant, so please be short, be brief. Good afternoon to all. My name is Andrea Coelho, as you said. Presently, I'm as a director of bioeconomy, my climate changes in environmental services and secretary of environment and sustainability, SEMAS. And since some time ago, since 12 years ago, I've been following this environmental agenda in the state. And obviously, many of the things that were presented today contemplate my way to think of the environmental situation affecting the state. All the presentations. I'd like to mention some issues that are fundamental when you talk about the state of Pará. One of them is the territorial complexity of our state, not only by its dimensions, but also by its different uh, territorialities that we have here. There are several conservation units, indigenous lands, Kilowala lands, more than a thousand projects for settling. And this makes it for uh, for this mis miscellany of uh, miscellaneous combination of interests, soils, land use, where you had different stakeholders, and these different stakeholders have different ways to deal with nature, different ways to have their visions about the forest nowadays for the indigenous people, the uh, peoples, the uh, standing forest, uh, all these views are different and they see in it a way of development for a good part of, uh, unfortunately, a good part of these stakeholders. Stakeholders is see, see forest as a delay in development. Now, when I'm in a meeting in San Felix of Xingu, I have a thousand, uh, 2,000 hectares, 4,000 hectares. Why, why do I have to have 80% in forest? This is a delay in development. So these issues, they sort of are cultural, let's call them cultural, to avoid other terms that might be heavier. They bother, they hinder many other aspects of preservation. And within this context, it's very difficult to work with, like red, it's something very complicated. And this is even more complex if you take into account, for example, as I said in other speeches, the discontinuity of the policies, discontinuity of actions. You have one or another, just very few servants, such as my case, that I've been following this agenda for 12 years, or five years at least, others. You know, it's very frustrating. Even though this year in the state we have a significant advancement. For example, nowadays, now we had the second ordinary meeting of the Para Forum for Change and Adaptation to Climate with the approval of the first uh, technical chamber of the forum, which is the chamber techni uh, technical chamber for equity and gender justice, which is an advancement. Also, the approval of our uh, state policy for climate, which was being tried to which there was there were attempts to form it since 10 years ago and uh, several forms were reactivated and uh, being activated only now see these are challenges that are put forth and the challenge that i would like to mention which is the fact that uh, around 65 percent of what we have still as forests in the states in the more than 800 thousand kilometers of native forests are concentrated, 65% are concentrated in 10 municipalities. And of the five, 10 communities, five are the champions of deforestation in the last five, six years. So to work the forest issue in the state is no uh, easy job here. Now, and also the political context, the national context has a significant influence about over our region because depending on the context that we have now we have problems to surveil to make monitoring and fortunately the last three years 2017 18 and 19 2000 
20 hasn't been analyzed, but more than five, six percent of the deforestation are outside the car area. So you have a registration of uh, mm, real estate that are extensive and non-monetary of uh, car and its car effectivation. They don't have a way to have a very well put environmental policy. So we have a very low articulation. We have very low articulation among different regions. And that's what Federico said. It's not fundamental. We need to regionalize. We need to work at the level of regionalization. Because of all these issues that I put forth here, it is very challenging to have an environment that might be favorable to investments. We've advanced a lot. The state plan for advancement of the Amazon, which substitute the plan for uh, combat to deforestation, and uh, PPK, which is the uh, the environmental territories that look for economia that look for low carbon emissions. The task force for deforestation has been tirelessly uh, combating and using surveillance operations. Legaliza Para, another one. Legalize Para, another program with a focus on preservation. And FAO, which is the uh, state fund for the Amazon. So we have big instruments that are put forth. Yes, but the challenge is to make it possible for us to overcome several problems, several other problems too, with involving stakeholders, political state, lack of articulation between the regions, and the lack of integration within organs of the state. It's even worse if you take it to other municipal and federal levels. So it's difficult for important instruments such as car and zoning can be in fact implemented. In zoning, we have uh, implementations that are no longer considered uh, state policy. So there are several other aspects that have to be considered. There are several challenging elements. The state of Pará, doubtlessly, continues to be uh, open agribusiness frontier with several problems of uh, illegal settlement in lands. And we have to be favorable to uh, investment, but there's a lot to be done for that. We've advanced in 2020, yes, but we still have a lot to do to attract investment to the state. Thank you, Andrea. We hand over the floor to Mauricio. I hope uh, you can hear me well. And I would like to thank the uh, speakers and the opportunity to be here. here. I also like to thank the compliment offered to me by. I know that Carlos tried to uh, uh, praise us, but uh, he called us captains. But we have no pretension of being a leader. More precisely, I'm a public servant since 26 years of the State Secretary of Environment. And since 10 years, a go in this agenda, in this climate agenda. Sorry. Sorry. And uh, we have this challenge in, in a couple of months to react to whatever was said and to tell a little about our story and talk a little about the payment for results and how we have worked in that issue. Well, first, I will answer to keep it very clearly. I will react to the uh, talk by Jasmine. This structure of the committees for zoning has nothing to do with the uh, with our consultative instances that are outside uh, climatic uh, issues 
and red. I won't get into the details on the zoning because it will demand a lot of time, but it was, or it is something that is very complex for the state because there is a relationship, uh, strength, powers, antagonic groups, and this issue is sub judici being discussed at court, or being discussed, uh, really. I want to tell you a little about our story in the next few minutes, about the climatic issues and red, and tell you that the whole of our story began in 2010 with the creation of this coordinating organ that I'm part of until today, and it started or the first act was the creation of our forum for uh, climate change. I remember the first meeting we had. At that time, it was Governor Blairo Margi, Raoni, the chieftain, and the representative of the Brazilian Forum of Climate Change. It was something unthinkable at the time that we would be able to uh, continue this work or to, to follow this the, the path of this work. In the, I have to mention a few partners for this path. GCF, the task force of the governors for climate and forest, had a very important mission in all this process, but since the beginning, since the very beginning, at that time, the governor of California, uh, Schwarzenegger articulated in you know, trying to build a forum, and at, at that time, the governor of California articulated with the, the governors of the Amazon region this climatic thing. This is very important for us. If the governor of California, we said, is doing uh, mobilization towards that way, why don't the uh, SEMA technicians create the forum of uh, climate change? That was the beginning of the great challenge, and we started to discuss these issues. And we had, in the very beginning, the first meetings to discuss our state policy for climate change. And this forum participam vários setores, academia, counted on the participation of civil society, federation da agricultura. Agricultural Federation, rural trade unions, class entities such as the uh, Order of Lawyers of Brazil, CREA, universities. So this discussion process was a real learning path for us technicians who, from that moment onwards, decided to learn how to make public policies. Public policy, public policies with legitimacy and with dialogue. So from there, we built up two legal frameworks that were important: the policy for climate policies and the state law that created RED. These two projects are fundamental and very important. But the process for learning was very important. In the state, we have several. Uh, people who are uh, engaged in climate change in red, even though it's a complex issue. Each paragraph of that law was discussed exhaustively with the uh, support of specialists and technicians, concepts of uh, safeguards, social environmental safeguards, sources of emissions, so many other concepts were discussed. It is important to say that uh, in the beginning, the participation of indigenous in Quilombola was not that easy. There were several attempts for several representatives groups to participate, but we had a very strict budget and we couldn't bring the size of the state to bring them with a certain pre but uh, also had uh, much frustration in that path. To bring this story up to today was something, perhaps our biggest legacy. As a technician of the secretary, you went through several governors, and we always insisted in the theme and the potential that this would have 
in helping towards a process of conservation of our forests and also to improve the life quality of the people who live there. Because really, all these mechanisms have as a goal, a final goal, the conservation of forests and the benefits thereof in uh, ecosystem services. I would like to say that we have tried to create mechanisms for preserving the forest, not because of forest only, uh, more demanding forest mechanisms, but to preserve the forest for ourselves. So that uh, beyond climate issues, emissions, biodiversity, and so on, we also protect the economy of the state, because if we keep forests, we keep the evaporation and transpiration process, which is fundamental to keep the productive sector standing. This is an attempt to persuade those who are less um, uh, favorable to forest preservation. And also this myth that uh, forests and uh, cattle, cattle raising are antagonistic. No, forest protects this production that the state is very powerful in. And it is inevitable to say that uh, cattle in the state of Mato Grosso is not important. It's wrong to say that. We grew a lot in this, and if we have many emissions in the rural environment, and we do, the solutions are still there, are always there, hand in hand. We've discussed a lot of, about uh, uh, the holding of carbon in the soil and to increase uh, processes or to improve processes in uh, cattle breeding. But I want to point out that coming to this point, or arriving to this point more specifically, in 2000 to 2017, it was a difficult process. We worked in the issue of uh, institutional red in the logics of the aligned program. It was a very complex tool. And then there was the uh, Paris Agreement that established our NDCs, and there we have to have redoubled care with the uh, meeting of uh, goals and the results of mitigation together with the credits. How do they work? So, within that logics, we were able, through this process, the participative process, to call the attention of KFW, and all this work has uh, made us calmer, because 10 years ago, the issue of red was extremely subjective. There were people who joked around that that was uh, a cod head, something indistinguishable. But a good thing is that in 2017, we were able to bring uh, the HEM program to Mato Grosso. I think he said the RED product program to Mato Grosso. And when RED established the directives for the establishment of this program, we opted to follow hand in hand with the directives, the guidelines. And this experience was very important for us because in a certain way, HEM came to demystify several instruments. He is pragmatic because somehow we don't need a, such a robust accounting system and such robust uh, tools to make uh, risk management. Then we counted on the Ministry of Environment to validate our missions Resolution number six of Conahead was fundamental, and the verification of GT Red was very much facilitated to us, and it was very quick to be done. And I hope that this continues to be so. So, 
the HAME progress, program is fundamental for us. There's logics of uh, payment for results. The market is also fundamental, but we still lack a uh, more clear, clearer jurisdictional uh, administration. So when uh, Red emitted a resolution uh, acknowledging the voluntary market, but for a state entity is still very little. If there is a juridical insecurity that we go through that path. And uh, also there was the concern of not having a re-education program to solve the issues of uh, how to uh, comply with NDC and also have potential to transfer that to mitigation. I think I'm out of my time. Carlos is uh, looking at me. And I want to say that we are working very much in other questions, issues that are related to and the mission of the partnership uh, uh, with uh, GCF. And we have a work of identifying the uh, climate vulnerability of the state. There was the detection and a modeling to show us that we have at least a reduction of rain in several regions of 300 millimeters. This is a, a big challenge in adaptation, but we're also working very strongly in the issue of uh, integration of uh, agriculture, um, cattle breeding and forest and try to reduce emissions and the challenge, the constant challenge of reduction in deforestation. The state worked, even though deforestation has increased a little, but we still are unfavorable in terms of uh, goals. The effort of the secretary has been incredible. The embargoed areas are 3 million um, fines that have been emitted, and that is acknowledged by the public ministry itself. I will finish now because Carlos is very anxious there for me to finish. And I'll say that uh, these partnerships are fundamental and that we follow this path to preserve forests and generate social benefits to, to indigenous, to the Quilombola, who are the most vulnerable. Well, that's it. I uh, stay here and I thank you for my participation and sorry for running off my time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mauricio. Erico, please, uh, it's your floor. Can you see me and hear me? Not yet, but we can hear you well. I don't know why my camera is working. I don't know if I'll be able to solve this problem, so please, Eric, yes, just go on. We can hear you well. Well, good afternoon to all. First, I'd like to congratulate Sifor and the speakers for their high-level positions. And I want to congratulate the scientific knowledge that was exposed. Eric, who became muted. Empiric knowledge through several rounds of uh, dialogues and public consultations. So, they're extremely important. I would like to say also that the speech of several uh, speakers here who talked about the importance of subnational jurisdictions for the reduction of uh, deforestation, especially the Amazon states. The great expectations of, uh, of complying with the goal in Brazil is uh, linked to the deforestation. And this brings a very important uh, issue to be thought of that was also exposed, which is the increase in the volume of investments. Now, they used to have investments that are still given by few investors financing banks. And it is important that there is an increase in this volume of financing so that these policies might have 
the resources to be developed. And also, I believe that not only investment, but also the conjugation of uh, investments in the public policies that have generated results. So this configuration is also very important. I also point out to the need of building models of partnership that might be more efficient through these financings so that these results become permanent. As was said, the issue of the uh, material effect, a concrete effect that would be the change in production model to a sustainable economy for low emissions, with low emissions, that would be extremely important. That the thought that should be reflected upon as was reflected upon how to make uh, payment for results. And speaking of that, we payments for results, we had the issue of the voluntary markets that were acknowledged for in the Ministry of Environment by Conrad. But in this review, I believe that uh, also a review should be had should have been had on the possibility of the sales of carbon credits, which would be an important source of financing that would be parallel to payments to by results. I think it is a mixed system in the two models in the complying for in NDC should be uh, paid for by payments for results. Whatever the, res the, the states and country could be able to reduce in terms of deforestation beyond their goals could be commercialized. That would bring an important uh, source of resources and they could be combined so that uh, public policies would uh, earn a significant uh, increase in results. As was said also, not only in results, but also in acts that would permanent and lasting. The issue of uh, C4 trying to connect all of the presentations, in that the impacts are very important and the results are very important too and they combine with our studies because many times it is difficult to establish impact and at the same time establish results. So the combination is an interesting one. What else? I'd like to point out the need of a legal framework nationally. Even though we are in the Paris Agreement and we're working on that, it is important to have uh, legal support as to the Article 6 of uh, the Paris Agreement, not only because of Conred, but also as law, and uh, so that could have stability to attract uh, environments. It is fundamental to have in Brazil, internally, a uh, legal Now, with the approval by the Senate of the law project for payment for environmental services, is a very important one for that. But that would also need to evolve to Red Plus, so a, a legal firm for Red Plus. Now, this project, coming back to the Congress chambers, and together with the uh, legal framework, we would have a stable scenario and would be able to work in a better way for the definition of public policies and the possible points of financing they could have. This becomes clearer and safer in the uh, ambit of uh, action of the subnational uh, jurisdictions. I'm very available to, for anything that you might want to question me and uh, I close here. Thank you, Erico. There are two elements that I'd like to add before I close these reflections. The first is related to perhaps in the last 20 years, we can say that uh, there ha ne has never been an interaction, a coordination and an alignment that would be independent of the political line which all the governors of the Amazon states have regarding the path and the strategy for the combat of the deforestation and the combat for the reduction of emissions. If we read 
the integral planning of the uh, state consortium of Lille Amazonia, you will find the uh, political arguments for the governors, as well as the regional plan for the combat to deforestation in the Lille Amazonia. I hand over the floor to Amy to close this session. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, everybody. What a spectacular event. It was a great pleasure to spend an afternoon discussing science, research, prospects of the, uh, gov the subnational governors, the captains really, are ahead in this uh, fight. And I'd like to thank everybody that contributed. Please turn on your videos so that we see everybody who's still here. And count on us. C4 has several partnerships in Brazil. We are located in Indonesia, but we have a graph, we have the task force of the governors, TNC. I can't name them all. But thank you very much for your partnership. And I wish you a great job for all of us. I'm going to head, especially next year, 2020, almost finished. It was a very difficult year, but we were able to do a lot of things still this year. And I'd like to thank Ana Carolina, who made the organization of this event. Yoli Gutierrez, who is a team of Sephora's uh, <coughs> communication team. She never stops with these seminars. And the Indonesia gang, who stayed at uh, 2 in the morning and following it up to guarantee to ensure that everything was going on. Tito, Tini, Henry, thank you. Now you can go to bed. Thank you. So, as I said before, our recording will be in the C4 site. I'll be putting up a link here that has all the workshops of Red that uh, C4 has been making. You can use that link, select the country you want to visit, and see the other webinars to make a tour of the world. This webinar will be put on to so that you can see it in Brazil. Brazil has always been a leader in the space for climate and forests. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll see you next year.